Hi, this is Hope, and in this presentation, hi, this is Hope, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create timesheets in ITG Center. Before I jump into the application, I'm just going to mention the features that I'm going to cover during the tutorial. We'll start with creating timesheets, and then I'll show you how to add items to your timesheets, and then how you can report time for each of those items. Then I'll show you how to either save or submit your timesheets. And then finally, we'll look at where you can go back in and review timesheets that you've submitted. All right, let me jump over into ITG Center. So I'm on my dashboard page that I set up to manage my tasks. So I have a My Tasks and My Timesheet portlet on the page. And I'll scroll down so you can see my timesheets. Right now, I don't have anything in there because I haven't created any timesheets. So I need to create one. The very first time I create a timesheet in ITG Center, I need to use the main menu option to create timesheet. So if I click on that and then select create and then timesheet, it will get me to the create timesheet page. So it lists time period, resource, and description. All three are required. It gives me by default the week that I'm in for the time period and has me as resource. Those are fine. I can keep those as they are. If you're a manager or a supervisor and you need to create timesheets for others, perhaps students, you can go in and click on this resource button and find them and create timesheets for them. It actually lists people that you can create timesheets for. The, the description is fine, so I'm going to leave that as is, and everyone should just keep them the same since it has your name and then the time period listed. I'll go over to Create and Create My Timesheet. In the Edit Timesheet page, there are a few things that I want to point out here. So underneath the title of the timesheet, there's a button to copy the timesheet. I can use that if I create the timesheet and then want to just make a copy of it for future time periods. So instead of creating new ones all the time, I can just copy them. There's also the option to cancel a timesheet. Now canceling a timesheet works on un it works on unsubmitted timesheets. So that's cancel timesheets right there. Um, cancel timesheets works on unsubmitted timesheets. So if you need to start a timesheet over and you just want to start from scratch, you can click on cancel timesheet. The next section has my name, the description, and the time period that I'm creating the timesheet for. And you'll notice over here that this timesheet number actually has three over here. Normally this will read one, but since I've been in the system creating these tutorials, I've had to cancel a couple of timesheets. So it just sequences them each time I've canceled. You can't create more you can't create more than one timesheet per time period. So this will almost always say one for you. You'll notice status right now is unsubmitted since I haven't done anything with the timesheet right now. Add items I'll get to in a moment. That I'll show you more of when we add items to the timesheet. I'm going to click on this approvals and transaction details link. And what this shows is just um, and what this shows is who has time what this shows is who has rights to approve your timesheets so I'm in the training instance right now and it's set for Ruby Rojo to be my time approver that's not a real person since we're in the training environment but if you were in an actual environment it would show who had actual approval for your timesheets I'm gonna close this Okay, back at my edit timesheets window, I'm going to go ahead and add items. 
so I need to put some stuff on here so I can record my time. To make it a little bit more efficient to add things to your timesheets, I'm going to choose the Add from My Items Suggested Items option here. Add Tasks and Add Miscellaneous will do about the same thing where I can go and search for tasks or find miscellaneous things, but Add from My Items to My Suggested Items is a little bit more efficient, and I'll show you that. Okay, so Add Items to My Timesheet. There is nothing here in my items right now. So the first thing I want to do is click over here on suggested items. And what suggested items will do is it will load items that I am assigned to and then are ready for me to report some activity on. So there are two items. These are the same items that appeared in my, my task portlet. So they're ready for me to report time on. And I'm actually just going to check them and copy to my items. You also notice that I could have checked all here to be a little bit more efficient. So copy to my items. And if I go back to my items, those two will appear here. So another thing I want to do is I want to add some miscellaneous things like vacation, sick leave, so that I can use those or find them easily each time I'm creating a timesheet. And I can add them to this My Items tab by using this Add to My Items drop down over here and going to Add Miscellaneous. So I'm just going to add all of these miscellaneous items to my timesheet, My Items tab. So as you can see, it's administrative, holiday, professional development, sick, unplanned work, and vacation. So all of these categories are miscellaneous items that aren't related to projects. I'll click OK. And now those items are on my timesheet. Now I need to... I clicked OK and now these items are on the My Items tab. To add these to my timesheet, I have to go and click on the boxes next to the items I want to add. So I'll make the two tasks active and then vacation and professional development. Since in this hypothetical work week, those were the things that I worked on. And after I've checked those, you notice I could go and remove them if I mistakenly checked them. but I can just go over to the bottom of the window and click Add. And I'm back at my Edit Timesheet page. It refreshes. And now those items are listed on the timesheet details. The next step is for me to go in and include hours that I worked on these items. So one thing about the tasks that are assigned to projects, you'll notice that I can actually go and look at the task details if I click on the link here. So for this customer support task, I can go and look and see some additional details on it. The task details show scheduled start date, finish date, how long it's supposed to go. There's lots of information in here that comes from the work plan that was set up for this particular project. It also includes who's assigned to the task. So over here you can see that I'm assigned to it. But if there were others who were also working on the task, their names would appear under this resource. I'm going to go ahead and close this window and go back to my timesheet. So you'll see that there's an activity listing, which category it's listed in for activity, and then the expected hours. So in this case, this does not mean that I'm supposed to spend 256 hours in a week on this project. This is my total effort expected for this particular task. 
so no need to worry about that. I'm going to scroll over a little bit so you can see the dates and I'm going to go ahead and add some time for each of these items. So this is the customer support. So in this hypothetical week, I spent four hours there and one hour here. And let's just look back. And I had a professional development day on Monday for a little while and then vacation for the rest. Your timesheet will obviously look very different than mine since I'm just doing this for training purposes. So you'll have your hours recorded and they should be an accurate representation of the time you've spent on projects. So you know if you've spent 10 hours one day and 6 hours the next day you should put that on your timesheet. But keep in mind that this does not approve or record overtime. That's a separate system that you'll have to go through and work with your supervisor on overtime. So I've added time for all of my items and you'll see that totals are summed across the rows and then down the columns. So I can see each, I worked eight hours each day and on each project I can see the total number of hours. Okay, so I've added time for all of my items. The next thing I wanna do is save. So back up here at the top, save. Not save and submit just yet. It tells me that it automatically will complete an item. Hmm, I'm going to go and look at that. I'll click OK. It's refreshed my page and now I can see that my hours are still there. It just saved it. So the one thing I want to look at is I actually want to go look at this other actuals tab because I want to check on that item. So it said that this reporting task is 100% complete. So I actually completed that task by putting in one hour. So you notice I can't actually make any changes to this percent complete or estimated remaining effort. Now what this tab is for, it's to help you report your progress in the system on tasks. So it's not a method to tell your supervisor that you need more time on a project, but really it's just to put that data into the system. So you can go in here and you can change these numbers, percent complete and estimated remaining effort. For example, if you decide halfway through a project that you need more time or maybe less time, you can adjust these hours. So these numbers for remaining effort right here. But discussing that with your supervisor and project manager is the first thing you should do before you make changes to your timesheet. Okay, so I'm going to click back over on time breakdown and I actually want to remove that item. In my hypothetical work week I've discovered that I planned to do this task but I actually didn't do it because I was at this professional development so I can remove items if I check this box scroll down a little under line actions there is an option for remove. If I click on that it refreshes the page and now it's gone and you'll notice that my hours have also adjusted for Monday so I can go back in and add an additional hour on Monday and save again. Okay a couple more things about your timesheets. There's two handy elements to it. The first is export timesheet. So this option allows you to export an Excel spreadsheet of your timesheet so you could give that to someone else for maybe additional processing for billing or other reasons. And then there's also this add notes. Now you'll notice up here if I check this item for customer support there's this line details so I could go in and write a note for each task in this line details options but that's not the best way to include a note for a timesheet. Add notes is so add notes if I click on that I need to scroll up a little bit so you can see the header so add notes to timesheet
I can include a note that reads that I went to training on ITG Center for professional development. And I can go and add this by clicking on that button. And now if I scroll down to the notes section, you'll see that note. So my supervisor, whoever is approving my timesheet or sheet or looking at my timesheet, so my supervisor or whoever is approving my timesheet can see this note and get more details on items in my timesheet. I don't have to use this, but if I really want to leave a note about something in my timesheet, I can use add notes, not line details, but add notes. All right. I think I'm actually ready to save and submit this. Before I do, I want to check the boxes next to the headers. So one thing I didn't point out is that each task, if it's um, part of a project or one of these miscellaneous items, will appear under a header. So by checking the box next to the header, I check all the items underneath it. And I want to do that before I save and submit it because what this is going to do is it will send the information right away to the project management module. I'm just scrolling up here to go to save and submit. So I've checked everything, save and submit. So the project management module and the time management module in ITG Center are separate pieces. And really just checking the boxes and saving and submitting will send that information over right away to the project management module. In fact, if you don't do that, nothing bad will happen. The pro there is a process that will update the system every few hours. So if you forget, it's not a huge problem. It just makes the reporting a little bit faster to project management. Now you can see, I'll scroll down here and show you the timesheet details after I save and after I saved and submitted this, you'll see that my status has changed for the task to submitted. And if I look up, here under status it's now pending approval. I'm done with this timesheet and I want to get back to my portlet so I can go back to the dashboard link here in my breadcrumbs. I'll click on that The reason I came back here is I want to see if this shows up in my timesheets, and it does. So that timesheet I just created is in my timesheets portlet. I can click on it, and I can review it. Now once it's submitted, you'll notice that I can't actually make changes to the time breakdown over here. Um, I'd actually have to rework an item if I wanted to do that. And then I'd have to save and submit it again. But if there are also items that you're asked to rework, that's the way that you do it. You come back in here, you check the box next to it, click rework, and it lets you change this time breakdown over here for the item that you're reworking. And now I just need to wait for it to be approved.